Hi everyone, welcome back to the shop. And today we are looking at a few accessories, starting with a honeycomb panel that Adam stacks had over that fits in this box. How does that work, you ask? Well, let's get this open and find out. Stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. All right, so let's take a look at what comes in the box. Gone ahead and opened it up and we'll just quickly take some things out. So we have a quick parts list and instruction manual it's just a three-page job and you see everything's packaged in here nice and tightly so let's just start pulling out some of these bags we've got they have, okay so they, they're labeling some of the hardware we got frame connector we've got some wing nuts on screws and then of course more hardware labeled by step we've got some rubber feet it feels like it's like some uh, bars for placement and hold down. Step three for four, through four, these look to be uh, like the shark tooth kind of nail or uh, rails. Step one, these would be, it looks like our outer frame parts. Uh, and the bulk of them being step two. Uh, these are a lot of the uh, tooth type nail things. All right, let's see here. We gotta do step one, deals with our frame. Oh, okay. So these pieces, there's a, there's a notch. They slide in like that. And they'll line up. So you gotta do that both sides and then put the screw in. Now step two is we got to lay, it's like we got to lay in these, we're going to put this here, Okay, now we have these rods, which are supposed to slide down here, and I believe it's supposed to capture all those individual blades. Okay, we got those sides. We're gonna make sure those are nice and tight. Make sure it's catching all these. And now we can attach this end one. Looks like this is supposed to then key into this panel as well. Somewhat. Push down. We got our step five button head screws. Alright. There we go. Now it's fairly solid. It's a little wiggle back and forth this way. But twisting it this way, not, and, you know, that's pretty solid this way. There's not a lot of flex that way, and that's one thing that you do notice with honeycomb beds is that they will sometimes have a tendency to sag. All right, so I flipped it over. I got the top side here, flipping it over, and these little rubber feet are going to be good. There we go. If you can focus in on that camera, that would be great. So they're just sticky back feet, feet. And I would put them along these rails here, um, basically in the corners. And the nice thing about these is they're about, uh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch tall. 
and they're just going to add some area for air to move underneath while also helping keep this stationary on whatever surface you're putting it on. So I'll definitely install these unless you have some other fixture that's going to hold this place. So I'll go ahead and stick these down. And then finally, so now that, yeah, that kind of grabs the surface of my table. The assembly was okay. Um, just needed to take a little bit of a time making sure to hold these rails parallel as you slide everything in and then getting those long um, rods in, making sure they engage each of the individual rails. Um, once that's together and these screws are on, it's uh, actually fairly stout. As a matter of fact, one of the nice things I noticed about this is that there's really not going to be a lot of sag uh, that you do see on some of the typical honeycombs. Now, you can get some twisting action this way, you know, so it can it can kind of skim, but once you have it down on the surface, those rubber feet really hold that in place. It's not going to shim that way. It's not going to push down too easily. Um, there is a little bit of wiggle with these individual rails in the center, uh, but you are not going to be using this for structurally holding them down. Uh, that is one of the, probably one of the, uh, the gotchas on this is that with a normal honeycomb bed, you can use some, some pins, some 3 dependent feet and such to hold material down to the surface of this, whereas these have these outer rails with kind of these T-slot type adapters that can then come out and grab things in certain areas. So you might be a little more limited in your hold down fashion, and this is also, um, it is, it's not a magnetic type bed, and so you're not going to be using magnets either. However, the flip side of that, it's very rigid, and uh, with these points here instead of the weave, uh, I feel that you have a, a lot smaller surface area actually touching the bed and so your any chance of flashback is going to be fairly minimized. Uh, there's definitely an uh, area uh, through these V's in the shark teeth to allow air to flow and then with our rubber feet on then of course we have about 3 8 inches of space for air underneath and then there's these louvers underneath that once again are going to let even more air flow through. So as long as you have proactive air moving uh, through your enclosure or across this surface it should allow any of those gases to escape and not build up and uh, cause any staining or any micro explosion type issues. So from that, um, fairly good design. In size, it's roughly uh, 430 millimeters or just, just under 17 inches wide. Uh, and then front to back from the teeth, you've got about 425 millimeters or 16 and 3 quarters inches long. Now the nice thing in addition to that is they do have these frame connectors that will go into these rails and allow you to double up this size. So now if you're getting your extension with your lasers, uh, you should be able to then order two of these, put them together, and you'll have more of a continuous bed to work from, uh, as opposed to trying to align two framed in honeycombs or purchase a large honeycomb as well. So uh, some modularity there as well. Um, so I guess the next thing to do is see how it fits under your typical lasers, and then we'll, we'll give it a shot. So stay tuned, I'll get this set up see how it works. All right, so uh, first off, just setting this up on the bench to kind of check dimensions here. And so I've got the Atom Stack A20 Pro here. And as you can see, it definitely fits well within there, um, but it does still cover the full range of motion. So right here, we're in the upper right corner and way back. And we definitely have the center of this module where the laser would be hitting as well within the rail and as well in front of these back set of teeth. And then if we uh, just slowly move this over to the side as to uh, not stress our steppers and back feeding electricity, you see it comes over here as well and it does not uh, quite get to this outside rail. Uh, and we are still, you know, back kind of online with that last tooth. So then again, just sliding it forward, you see here again, it kind of comes up to this front tooth area. So. Uh, our material will be fully supported in the full range of the machine with this Atom Stack A20 Pro. So let's go ahead and get this in the enclosure and we'll see how it works with the smoke and uh, beam dissipation as well. All right, so I've got the laser in the new bed in the enclosure here and we're going to run just a quick test box file and we'll just kind of see how it dissipates the smoke and uh, how it works as far as any backflash on the back. 
So let's go ahead and get that file running and we'll check it out. All right, so let's kind of check these things out. Items all fell through, so they all cut through pretty well. See on the back side, there's just a little bit of flashing in the corners there on the strap piece. Um, but on our individual pieces, this is the back side. So you kind of see there's just, just a minor little points on these bottom ones where there's just maybe a little bit of flashback. Top sides are clear. Uh, same thing here, just, just these minor little flash points on there, uh, which is good to see. And uh, as it was operating, I, hopefully it comes through on the video, um, the air was kind of moving out to the side with the smoke and uh, definitely was extracting out of here. I didn't see any of it really hanging up anywhere. So it does look like that having that kind of 3 eighths of an inch plus underneath um, and then some active airflow going underneath does help uh, move the air, th air through. Uh, there wasn't a lot of flashing that I could see because again, this is a flat black metal. So there's not really reflective. It's going to absorb more of that light. And uh, we'll have to see over time how much residue kind of collects on here and how hard it is to clean. Um, I imagine it's going to be similar to the honeycomb panels where you're going to spray it down with some cleaner and then uh, let it sit for a bit and then rinse it off and that'll probably be the worst of it. So, so we did some testing on cutting on this and it did perform as it should. It allowed air to move through to keep that smoke and debris moving. Uh, it had minimal contact points so that any flashback from the laser cutting through was minimal. And uh, most importantly, it is a level surface to hold your material down. Now, I did not need to use these uh, hold down clamps, but they definitely would help out with some sheets on holding the four corners down and relatively speaking These bolts are going to stay out of your way However, any jigs that you may need to set up with this are then of course going to need to reference along these sides and maybe be held down using these uh, T-track pins so uh, a little may possibly a little bit limiting uh, compared to honeycomb beds on how you might set up a jig center wise and such but not necessarily uh, a huge factor in that. Um, it is really nice that you can extend it by buying two and putting connectors together. And the other nice feature on this is that if it was to really get gunked up, uh, you could definitely take these screws out, pull those pins out, and you'd have each of these individual rails that you could actually get in there and scrub down, rinse down fairly easily with it disassembled as opposed to your honeycomb bed. Uh, you're not taking that apart and you, it's going to be harder to scrub in between them. So definitely maybe a little more serviceable and cleanable uh, on this one as well. Definitely a, an option for people looking for a good uh, surface that will help uh, improve your cuts and keep them cleaner. So if you're interested in this, I will have links down below where you can get your own. And uh, I will have links to a few other things that I've used in this video and others that I think are useful when using your diode lasers as well. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and uh, possibly educational. If you do have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. And uh, if you like what you saw here uh, and I've earned your trust, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of uh, product reviews as well as laser tips and other shop tips and occasionally uh, just a fun project as well. So uh, if you want to see what's going on in my workshop, definitely uh, check those out. And uh, I thank you for stopping by. And I hope that you too can get out in your workshop and make something. So we'll see you next time.